Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have John Driscoll on the line. He's founder and CEO of Naked Development. John, welcome to the show. Hey, Adam, thank you for having me on. I appreciate that. All right, John. So uh, excited to talk about today's topic. So leveraging technology really to disrupt your industry. So that's our overall theme. Um, and I'm excited to get into what you're doing as a creative agency to you know help clients create apps that really stand out. Um, so I mean, that's a lot of entrepreneurs, business owners, executives that listen to this and always looking for ideas and tips and ways to really stand out. So pumped to have you to get your perspective here. And just to get this started, we'll start this episode with our Mission Matters minute. So John, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. John, what mission matters to you? That's a great question. Um, you know, I would say, you know, my mission uh, and maybe the company's mission is to help others, you know, solve human problems. And, and I, I want to, you know, even though we're a tech company, it's really our intention to solve human problems. Using technology, you know, as a way, as a, as a, as a tool to do that. I don't think it can solve all problems, but I think there are a lot of things that people face in industries and personal lives and, you know, as, as consumers even. And I think technology has an amazing ability, as we've seen in the past, you know, 10, 20, 30 years to solve these human problems. And so, you know, my job and my mission is, is to really help people do that, even people that haven't, you know, worked with technology before. That's awesome. And uh, and uh, great great to have you on the show and get your take on this topic, because especially that idea of not using technology or maybe not feeling that, you know, you're necessarily technologically savvy. I mean, there's, you know, people fall in different kids for this stuff. And, and the way I like to look at it is that when, I, when I'm talking to my team, I'm like, I know certain things, but there's a lot I don't know. And that's <laughs> what I don't know sometimes intimidates me. Right. And so as business owners, we have so many things we got going and you're like, Oh, well, what don't I know here? And you're like, oh, there's a whole I don't know. So yeah. I guess just to just to get us kicked off on this topic, um, tell us, um, just to kind of set the stage, like tell us your background and maybe how you got started in this field um, before we move on. Yeah, so I actually have been an entrepreneur and a you know business owner for uh, 20 years now. And uh, just, just hit 20 years this last March. Congratulations. Um, That's a big deal. Come on. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it was, uh, it's been quite a journey. Um, I started uh, when I was 30, and um, I started in the financial industry, started a company, um, and really, you know, kind of was successful despite myself, uh, mm -hmm. because I just felt like I, the only thing I really knew how to do is teach other people um, how to do what I was doing. Um, I didn't know how to run a business. I really certainly didn't know how to read a P&L or anything like that. But what I did is I just surrounded myself with good people and kind of grew that business for about nine years and then ended up selling that um, to another financial organization uh, as I exited in um, roughly 2007, 2008, uh, which was good timing, it turned out to be. And so I, I really did that to go seek uh, what I really considered my passion, and that was I, I saw how technology was kind of emerging in different ways, and specifically the app industry, and I wanted to be a part of that. I was actually consulting on March 6, 2008, when I uh, watched a Steve Jobs uh, presentation of this new thing called the App Store, and I signed up that first day. And it's, uh, it's been an interesting ride ever since, yeah. You were on the App Store the first day? First day. Spent $99. On, man. That, that alone, that, that alone, are you kidding me, John? That's what you call a pioneer in the industry. So what is your what is your dev, I'm going to make this up right now. What is your dev cred? That's my dev cred. <laughs> your yeah, that's, cred. That's your dev cred right there. Come on, well, man. That's amazing. It was, it was incredible. I was very much moved by the whole experience. I actually went next door to my co-founder at the time, and I said, you know, Jason, hey, you know, Steve Jobs changed everything today. We have to completely change course. I 
you know, put my credit card in for $99, signed up, and we didn't even know how to make an app, but we figured it out, and uh, it's it's a fun ride ever since. Oh, what an amazing story. So, obviously, a lot has taken place since then, um, many, many sure. things just in the world, uh, App Store, all this, like the whole world has changed since that day, in my opinion. Um, so, that being said, maybe start off and tell us a little bit more about um, Naked Development so Agency. Tell us more about what you do. Yeah, so we specifically, when we first started out, we, we made apps for, um, you know, large companies, you know, lots of big industry, you know, Fortune 500. And we did that in the beginning. Uh, first, first, I couldn't convince a CEO they needed an app in the beginning. But uh, <laughs> after a few years, people started catching on. And so we, we made, you know, some different apps. And then we realized that our DNA was a little different. Um, our mission was going to be a little different. We, we started working with startups. And we kind of loved the disruption side of the industry, where people were bringing new thoughts and new ideas into the marketplace and we wanted to help them do that and a lot of them didn't know how to do it they didn't have direction and uh, and so i kind of just put myself in their position and tried to figure out what would i need to do to help the average person who just has a dream and an idea on how they're going to do this what would i need to do um, to provide the kind of support so that they could be successful and that's kind of where we really started to go. And it's been probably a good ride of about eight to nine years working with startups specifically to make applications uh, for either their business or a new startup business. And, um, yeah, it's, it's been great. One of, one of the parts of that is to help people raise money, mm -hmm. to help them to find resources so that they can, you know, fund their startup. And so this year actually alone we've raised over $9 million for startups that we work with. So what type of um what type of if there's a type of industry you work with primarily or is it agnostic? So I would say the one thing we don't do is games. Um we do just about everything else, you know, business facing. We've had a, some really uh, amazing medical apps that we've we've helped with um you know to to actually, you know, build those and even get them funded and actually exit the industry. Um, and that's been a big one. I would say financial is big. The banking industry, if you're listening now and you're interested in where banking is going, let me tell you, this is the big, exciting disruption that we're going to see in the next five years. All what we call a bank and what we've known as a bank for our entire mm -hmm. lives is going to be transformed. Wow, that's that's interesting to me. And thinking about um, banking, fintech, blockchain, like all yep. these things, how all of this is working together. And the like, it's like there's this major shift going on. And those that realize that the shift's happening and that are doing, you know, what what they can to add value to the market and just overall, I think are going to see maybe some disproportionate returns on their effort, possibly. Uh, like this, uh, yeah. Not saying that not saying there's not risk and a lot of other things going on, but I just mean I just think it's a really interesting time. So for sure. circling back to just our overall, you know, topic and thought process here of of what it looks like to leverage technology. So I know there's some people listening to this right now that, are, you know, I've heard some things like this before, like we need an app, we need to think about develop, we need other things that we should be considering, but like how relevant is that to me? Um, especially if they don't have necessarily the strong tech background or the strong maybe internal team, development team or otherwise. Um, mm -hmm. Can you speak on that a little bit from what you see from your vantage point? Because you've, number one, you've been obviously working in this field for a long time, um, but number two, you're seeing some of these shifts. So maybe there's some shifts happening that people don't understand that they should be considering, especially when it comes to their to their technology. Yeah, I, you know, I actually think in, if you don't have an online or app component, one of the two, it can be web-based. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be necessarily a native application on your phone. If you don't have that connected to your business, whether it be lead generation or whatever that is, um, I think you're already behind. You know, mm -hmm. you, if you not aren't making those movements, those shifts in the way you do business, you know, then you're going to be kind of like Borders and Barnes and Noble in 1990. You're sitting on 2.7 billion in revenue each with hundreds of stores, and you think the world's great. And there's this little-known company called Amazon coming up right behind you. 
Mm, and mm, mm. I just don't, I, I think what I really want to do is help people to figure out how they're going to change. Because if you, if you don't change, the world's just going to change in front of you. You're going to be left behind. Mm-hmm. So what, what, where does somebody start with this? So let's just say that there's some people listening as well that are thinking about, you know, and, I, and I'm not looking for any magic like anything. Obviously, every business is going to be different. Everybody's going to have sure. different needs and challenges, and they're going to be in different, let's just say, parts of their technology journey, right? But in general, like, what are some of the things or themes that people should be thinking about that are looking at that change and that are like, hey, maybe 2022 going into 2023, like, we need to make some investment. We need to make some changes here. Like, what are some themes that should they should be considering? Well, I think one of the most obvious ones is how you get your clients, how you meet those people. You know, the old model of you know, going to a network group and meeting people and handing out a business card, that just isn't how the world's working anymore. If you're not utilizing and leveraging Google and Facebook and, and, you know, podcasting, things like that, then you're just, you know, you you need to make that shift now and yesterday, really. Um, That's the one thing. The other thing is is the, the flow of the experience of how people interface with your company is there software that you're leveraging, whether it be making new software or utilizing other software, some way to make, to take the friction out of the relationship that you have as you interface with people. We've helped attorneys, real estate people, um, you know, insurance people, people in old industries, but they're rethinking the way that they're doing business. And we're seeing them start, you know, create these amazing new platforms. For people, um, I just don't think how we get a mortgage, how we get insurance, how we get all these services, it's just not going to be the same. And mm. so, um, if you're just going about business as usual, I just that's what worries me about people. What are some of the things that so okay? So we looked at one side of the issue, which is you know mm-hmm. what's missing. What are some like if we're looking at the other side of the issue and we're just kind of saying okay, what are some people? And you don't have to say companies, but just in general, what are some things that you're seeing when people really get it right? When you're like okay, like this makes sense. Like what does that look like? Yeah, I'll actually I'll I'll reach out and, and talk about one specifically. So, hmm. um, you know, we've worked with. Um, um, Josh Altman and uh, another founder. Um, mm-hmm. He's, you know, very famous, obviously, on television and everything. And, you know, they came to us, um, you know, trying to create technology. They were, you know, kind of struggling through the process of, of developing their first piece of technology called BidMyListing.com. And um, at first, you know, there was there was some problems with the platform. They, they called me, and we kind of worked through what those problems were, and, you know, we created binmylisting.com and they went live and people started leveraging this platform in a, in a new way of listing properties um, for consumers and for real estate agents. Mm-hmm. And uh, by doing that, um, it kind of changed the whole dynamic of marketing dollars. And uh, they've seen, you know, amazing success already. And within a very short period of time, Mark Cuban got involved and uh, helped them with um, funding. And, uh, yeah, we've seen amazing success come out of that. And that's just been just this year, you know, that, that just recently happened. Man, that's exciting. That's a, that's an exciting thing. Um, why do you think most, um, technology products fail? Like as somebody goes through, cause I think the other part of this is sometimes somebody will start a project or maybe they've had an experience in the past and they're just like, ah, you know, like, I don't want to go through that again. Or like, like, why do you think most people fail when they, when they, when they try to do this digital transformation, we'll call it. Yeah, that's probably my most favorite question of all, because it, Mm. it, it really goes to the name of our company. We call ourselves naked, not to just be provocative, but because it's about minimalism. Well, going, going back to that naked part, I was like, wait a minute, who booked this? What is this naked development? <laughs> it threw me off for a second when I had to go scroll, and I'm like, oh, okay, I get it now. I was like, oh, interesting. Uh, <laughs> we've definitely thought, we've had people who thought we, you know, make, you know, pornography or, you know, apps or something like that, but it's not true. Uh, it has real meaning. We're about, you know, sometimes we use terms like stripping ideas down or, you know, we talk about minimalism. Uh, simplicity, 
um, because if you're going to enter into the technology world and start building technology, you need to start small. Amazon's such a great example. The first thing they sold was books. That's it. Mm. They knew if they could perfect how to sell books, they could sell us anything in the world. And literally, you can order something right now, and we could have it before this podcast is over at it in front of our house just about, right? And that's because they perfected what they were doing in a small way. That's where most people fail. They they see this big grand vision and they want that vision now and they're impatient about how to get there. Jeff Bezos was very, very patient. You know, 1997, you know, and people see him now and they look at Amazon, they go, I want to be like them doing everything. Well, Amazon didn't do that in the beginning. They started small. You have to start small. Well said. So, John, first off, um, it's been great having you on the show. If somebody is listening to this and they want more information and they want to connect with you and your team just to, you know, talk about what, what, they, what might make sense for them, I mean, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, so I think the, the best way is just to reach out to us on the website, uh, nakeddev.com. So it's just dev, um, you know, D-E-V. Dot com and you can go there and reach out to us as so many people do every day and, and uh, you know get on the phone with me and just request to talk to me fantastic well John uh, really has been a pleasure having you on the show um, we'll put all those all the websites and stuff like that in the show notes so that uh, my, my audience can just go ahead and run over and, and click on to that and just head right on over um, and by the way if you're listening for the first time um, this is Mission Matters, and we're a platform that's dedicated really to amplifying stories for entrepreneurs and experts and, and getting to know what their mission is and how they're bringing value to the marketplace and to the world in general, right? Um, so if that's the type of content that you like and that you're interested in, definitely hit that subscribe button because we have many, many more um, mission-based entrepreneurs and executives and experts coming on the line, and we don't want you to miss a thing. And, John, really it has been a pleasure getting to know more about about you and your company. Come on, what? What? Is, I mean, you're you're a you're you're a legend here. First day on the Apple Store. That's your death cred. So again, uh, thanks for coming on the show. It's thanks, been great. Adam. Appreciate that, Adam. I uh, really enjoyed it.